Well, it's good to be back, uh, actually in a, in a place where my accent is not exotic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot tell you, I was, I, I've been on a six-week book tour, and uh, I was in Boston, and uh, also Seattle, and, you know, Salt Lake, Denver, everywhere, you know, pretty much, I think, every town with a population over 10,000. <laughs> and uh, uh, it, it, was, it was always humorous to hear people say, well, you know, I, I didn't really care what you said. I just wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess is at least one way to get people interested. <laughs> uh, but it, yeah, it's, it's good to be back. This is actually my last day of the book tour. Uh, I have remained sane which I wasn't sure I was going to able to do. Uh, but it's great, you know, to, to have the support of my publisher. And, and you know, uh, I'm, I'm not, certainly not uh, whining too much about it. <laughs> I'm just glad to be back home and get back to writing. Uh, the book uh, that I'm going to talk mainly about today, of course, is The Cove. And it's, it's a very different kind of book than I've ever done before. And it's... It, the way it came about is very different. Uh, I always have an image that comes to me that starts a novel, and that, that's the case with this one. Uh, the image was of a young woman, I knew she was in the mountains, um, who was uh, washing clothes. Well, I didn't know that at the time, but what I did know was that she heard what she thought was a beautiful bird, and she gone up, gone uh, into the into the woods pulled back some rhododendron leaves and found not a bird, but something else. I had that image, that's the image that I ran with. But before that image came, uh, which was about three years ago, three, three and a half years ago now, about five years ago, I had found one of the most amazing stories uh, that uh, I've ever read about. And in a way, I think it was pretty intimidating because I had the sense that if I couldn't write a novel, get a good novel out of this, I'd better give up. Because the story, the historical story was so true. And, and, and the story uh, began when I read a book uh, by a local writer up near Coley uh, called The Western, no, the, the German Invasion of Western North Carolina, <laughs> which is a pretty interesting title. Uh, and the German Invasion of Western North Carolina occurred in 1918, and well, toward the end of 1917. And, what had happened was that uh, several thousand Germans had been sent to Hot Springs, North Carolina. Can y'all hear me okay? I, I didn't ask for I thought we were. Uh, Hot Springs, North Carolina, which is just above Asheville in Madison County. And they had been sent there and put in an internment camp, not a prisoner of war camp. You know, I mean, usually we think when we hear prisoner of uh, internment camps, we think of the Japanese during World War II, but this was a, an internment camp. These were German citizens who had been in America when the war began. And I had never realized that. I would never realized that there were German internment camps in the United States. I was fascinated by that. And that one had been in western North Carolina. So uh, I, you know, I read the book. I did, did further research, actually did some uh, research uh, newspapers uh, and, and read about uh, the reaction of the people in the community around Hot Springs, which uh, was mixed. Uh, the, the Germans would give concerts, they would play concerts uh, on Sundays for the local people. But there was also resentment, as you might imagine, uh, particularly because some of the locals felt these Germans were getting better fed than they were. So it was, it was as you might guess, and particularly because there were Germans and Americans in the war, uh, uh, a, a kind of mixed reception. <coughs> but Anyway, what happened was I, I was doing further research and I found out that these Germans had come, or a number of them, about 50 of them, off a ship called the uh, Vaterland, which at that time had it, was the largest ship in the world. Hmm. It had been built in Hamburg, Germany, right before World War I. Uh, it was a luxury ship. Uh, as I say, the largest ship that ever been built, the largest ship on, you know, ever, and also the most opulent. Uh, as I was doing my research, uh, I, uh, you know, I would read descriptions of it, and actually, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. 
uh, it, it pretty much made the Titanic look like a river barge. I mean, it really, and, and I know you're skeptical, but I kept reading about this one book that had been written uh, for, uh, on a subscription basis, you know, back in the early part of the 20th century, and that, you know, where a certain number of people had to agree to buy the book. And it's, it, there weren't many, evidently, <laughs> because I kept looking for the book. I kept getting references to this book. And I, it took me several months to finally track down one copy in New Zealand. Oh and I, I paid $200 for it. And it was worth it. It was worth it. And because it has pictures of the, uh, the ship. And, you know, I, I just wanted to show a few of these. I think, uh, let you see this ship because, as I say, it was the largest ship in the world, the most opulent, uh, and just amazing how luxurious it was. I, these, these are interior And shots. the story of what happened was, even, to me, just as amazing because uh, what actually occurred. Put this down. Don't let me forget this. That's two hundred dollars. No, we not What happened was the ship had made a, a, a couple of. Uh, Voyages and, and it was coming back into the United States in 1914, and the war broke out in Europe. And for three years, this ship was marooned in New York Harbor. Three years, because the United States was neutral. And the crew was still getting paid from Hamburg, and they were just free to come and go. They were, uh, you know, I, when I was doing my research, uh, you know, I read reports of them swimming in the Hudson River, ice skating in Central Park. Uh, they would go to the opera. Uh, they would do fundraisers for the Central Powers, for the German. Uh, they actually had one on the ship that was attended by William Randolph Hearst, who was very pro-German. You may not know that. But. And so uh, for three years this went on. And then when the United States entered the war, the ship was seized, actually changed. Uh, uh, it was, and this is kind of tr tragic. Uh, the ship was seized and turned into a troop ship uh, called the Leviathan, which you may have heard of. But the ship was stripped, and they were throwing these beautiful marble, you know, washstands. Uh, you know, they were stealing stuff. They, were, and they just, but they stripped. They stripped the shirt of the ship and turned it into a, uh, you know, a troop ship, and, and that's what it was used for. So, Ron, historically, if a ship is seized like that, the government seizes not a private. Oh, yeah, no, the government, yeah, the government, and they arrested the Germans. And, you know, they, they, and then the question was, what do we do with these Germans, you know? And, and what they did with at least a few of them was send them down to western North Carolina. Uh, there were other camps that they went to, and, and, and that's where they remained. And you can actually go up to Hot Springs today, and you'll see some of the graves, because some of the men died of a flu epidemic. Uh, uh, you know, you can actually go up there and see if you, you know, not many about them, there's six, maybe seven graves. So, anyway, as I say, some of these men, including members of the orchestra, ended up in uh, Western North Carolina. And this is where, uh, if I were a historian, I would probably just be tearing my hair out. But as a novelist, uh, I was given a great gift because in the 200 pages of the German invasion of Western North Carolina, at, in the middle of the book, at the end of a paragraph, just kind of like a just cast off sentence, just you know, almost like an aside, she says, and one of the prisoners escaped. And that's it. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's like she wasn't even curious, like, you know, you escaped in Western North Carolina in 1918. You're German, you know, your voice, you know, you're not going to quite blend in. And, uh, and actually, I was down at South Carolina Book Fair this, this weekend, and, and, and uh, I was telling another story that seemed to amuse, and maybe it will amuse you too, but to give you an idea of how alien someone would be like that. Uh, this is true. Uh, and and uh, there was a, a German prisoner of war who escaped at, at about the same time in the North Carolina. Actually, East Tennessee Mountains, and uh, he had gone. He did not speak English, and he'd gone up to this this woman who was in her 90s, early 90s, was living alone in a cabin, and uh, this German was knocking on her door and, and speaking in German, and she figured out who this was. She knew who it was, so when he opened the door, she shot him <laughs> and killed him. 
And, but it wasn't because she thought he was German. She thought he was a Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she, she'd heard about, you know, I mean, she'd right. been through the Civil War, and, and you know, none of, none of the uh, northern uh, troops had gotten to her, but now she finally met one. <laughs> so anyway, um, so, you know, the fact that you were German, and, went, and that gives you an idea of how alien someone might be up there. But, uh, but yeah, one of, one of them escaped. Yeah, that was all I needed. Uh, that's all I needed. So anyway, that's the code. <laughs> <laughs> this book, I, was, I think, took more out of me than any book I've ever written, which is strange because it's actually one of the shorter novels I've written. But I think I was kind of burned out from Serena when I started. I probably should have waited a while. Uh, but that image came to me of, of the woman seeing the man playing the silver flute. I was afraid to wait. <laughs> but I ended up, I mean, I took so many wrong turns on this book. I ended up throwing away more than I read. Yeah. I probably, I think the book's about 250 pages. I threw away two, you know, 250. Just wrong turn. But that's part of it, right? Cutting out your organs. <laughs> <laughs>